Good afternoon. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here and thank you for coming and for your participation. Hopefully this will be a very useful 90 minutes in which you will be able to learn about our work and about our opinions. I hope my colleagues uh, will, uh, this will be very interactive as we planned it. Uh, we will exchange ourselves all the time uh, between the slides uh, to really share our expertise on various topics. So uh, you already heard uh, there will be three speakers and the uh, presentation is entitled Tower, the Understanding of Association of CCSVI and uh, Multiple Sclerosis. So I would start with uh, a kind of uh, a really basic of what we know about MS and that's that MS is an autoimmune multifactorial disease uh, of unknown uh, origin. And uh, uh, clearly, uh, during the last 150 years, many, many hypotheses uh, respect to the cause of MS have been put forward. But neither one of them was able to explain uh, why this disease happens in, uh, you know, uh, patients with, with multiple sclerosis. And so, during the years, really uh, a, a multifactorial hypothesis has been adopted uh, uh, in which infectious agents like uh, Epstein-Barr virus, the most important one, environmental factors including vitamin D insufficiency and smoking and genetic factors which is HLA-DR15 that's a uh, haplotype present in about 60% patients with MS, lead to activation of uh, immune system and uh, damage of the myelin uh, in order through inflammation and different phases to produce the disease which we call multiple sclerosis. That's something that we uh, uh, clearly achieved in knowledge over the last 100 years. About two years ago, uh, Dr. Zamboni or Professor Zamboni from Italy uh, proposed a very uh, uh, intriguing uh, hypothesis that chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency, the term he gave to this condition, uh, might be involved in uh, uh, patients with MS. He based uh, his findings on a number of different techniques, mainly Doppler and catheter venography, so invasive and non-invasive techniques. And he uh, found that in the principal uh, uh, extracranial drainage venous pathways, which are the jugular veins and the azygous veins, uh, there are uh, venous anomalies that are impeding right drainage, right outflow from the brain. That's the simplest I can explain, although the hypothesis is probably more complicated. And, and clearly, uh, he proposed that there are a number of different mechanisms uh, if there is obstruction at the peripheral extracranial level that can lead to uh, reflux of this uh, blood to the brain. So, when we started this uh, whole uh, research about the CCSVI, we knew that we need to adopt multimodal approach for diagnosing this condition. In our armamentarium of tools we are using in collaboration with the Department of Neurosurgery and Dr. Adnan Siddiqui, we have several non-invasive and invasive tools that have been applied in our studies. From non-invasive, we use Doppler sonography, magnetic resonance venography, three different types, without contrast, with contrast, and we are measuring the flow velocities and the flow volume. And then we are using computerized tomography venography for non-invasive detection of venous anomalies in the azygous vein. We are using an armamentarium of two invasive techniques, which are catheter venography and so-called intraluminal ultrasound, IVUS. Please remember those abbreviations because I will not have enough <laughs> text in the, <laughs> in the future slides to de define them uh, every time. 
So the question whether catheter venography, as many patients think, is a gold standard is questionable based on what we learned in the last two years. And I think that uh, during my talk and Dr. Siddiqui talk, we will learn a little bit more uh, uh, why is that. I thought a lot about this slide and tried to think really how to present you what we, in one slide, so many data that we gathered over last two years. And so if you understand this slide, which might change over time, I'm not saying it's a bullet science, but I'm saying that's what we learned and that's how we are seeing this problem going uh, forward in our research. I will call intraluminal everything what is inside the vein and I will call extraluminal everything what is kind of outside the vein and then I will divide these venous abnormalities into structural, which means you need to physically find it there, or functional, which means could be something that is there or it's not there based on the day of the time that you are doing the, the, the exam. We learned that there are a number of anomalies inside the veins, but they are not changing the diameter of the veins. If you do exam, the diameter will be exactly the same. So there is something inside the vein. There are five types of them. Uh, the flaps based on uh, uh, their uh, connection with the venous wall. We call them flaps, septums, membranes, malformed valves or webs when there is a cluster of these anomalies present in the vein. So if you think what we found about these things which are inside the veins, we found that 70% of MS people have these things inside the vein, but we also find that 50% of healthy people have something inside their veins. And uh, we are finding that there is no difference between progressive and non-progressive patients in amount of these anomalies. And we are saying that uh, uh, MRI and uh, CTV have no resolution to uh, uh, define those anomalies, whether uh, intraluminal ultrasound and catheter venography definitely can help us to detect these anomalies. The second type are those which are outside the veins or are changing, if you look the vein, they are changing the, the diameter of the vein. There are two types of them. Stenosis, which means you will have a tube being of the lower diameter or annulus, which there is a fibrotic restriction of the venous wall. We are finding by Doppler that 25% of MS people and 50% of healthy controls having those anomalies, and that 35% of MS patients and 25 healthy controls have this present on a, a MRV. But we are finding that progressive patients have many more of this visible stenosis than non-progressive patients. And, uh, you know, the data on catheter venography that are uh, widespread on the internet, how 90, 100% of MS patients have these uh, uh, visible anomalies, I would really argue that we don't have standardized criteria to define what is the stenosis. And really no healthy control studies have been done by using catheter venography to define whether healthy people have also some of these anomalies. Clearly these anomalies are creating something that's not properly flowing through the vein. And these are reflux that blood is going towards and the no flow when you have complete closure of the passage of the blood through uh, uh, the vein. And we are finding that 55% of MS patients and 35% of healthy controls have this problem and no big differences between non-progressive and progressive patients in amount of functional abnormalities. Again, IVUS, MRV, and catheter venography are very complementary in, in defining these anomalies. Finally, if you would have 
something that's obstructing the drainage in the veins, there should be a compensation. It's a, our nature to compensate in some way for the damage. And so people develop collaterals. And so if you look, what's the presence of the collaterals in all our studies? We found that 90% of MS people and 90% of healthy controls, equal number, has at least one collateral. But MS patient, when we count all the collaterals in the jugular veins, we are finding that there is a trend for more collaterals in MS people. Clearly, if you think, I gave you an example of internal jugular vein, but I think similar things is in the, uh, in the azigus vein. So probably this is the really basic of what CCSVI is, a symbiosis of problems inside the vein, problem outside the vein, and collaterals and functional abnormalities. And we have done some research uh, in which we try to find out whether people first have these problems inside the vein and that over time they have more extra luminal problems and our data are indicating that there could be possibility that first you have something inside the vein and that's creating a turbulence and over time this is leading to the stenosis of the vein itself. <laughs>